So one of the questions we're asked very often is, how do you implement ACA test prep in the classroom? Do you have any recommendations? Do you have any you know, kind of ideas about how to roll this out? And, uh, and we do. We've got some, some great ideas about this, as a matter of fact. Uh, one of the things that we all value most is that this way of learning, and, and by the way, this is a popular way of learning in the design world. Almost every designer that I know has a lynda.com account, and that's where almost everybody learns. And lynda.com, there's uh, no textbook, there's no quizzes or anything, it's just videos. And you watch it, and it's kind of like going to a workshop or getting professional development. So um, it works a lot that way because we, the ACA test prep team, are kind of taking the teaching off of your plate you're now free to kind of walk around, find the kids that are stuck, help them out, and really have more of a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the kids. And that's the benefit of this whole thing. Even before I was doing ACA test prep, I was recording my own lessons to use in class because I wanted to be able to just say it once right and well, and you know, I'd record it, and then I'd just have the kids watch that, and then I could walk around and answer all of the questions but I didn't have to, when I answered Joey's question, stop the whole class learning. They could just keep watching the video. Uh, it was a great way. So what that does is that offers up all of this opportunity for you to walk around, monitor the progress of the students, be available for questions, uh, and you know the typical MBWA, management by walking around. It's a great classroom management technique, but it's also just a really great teaching technique. It's kind of like that you hear about flipped classrooms. It's kind of the same thing. Um, Second thing, assessment. So my favorite way of assessment is to just take screenshots. I have the kids at the end of every video maybe take a screenshot, you could do it that way, or you could have them just at the end of every class period take a screenshot of their progress. What I've also learned to do is have them take a picture of the whole interface of the software, because if you're just looking at a JPEG uh, you know, screenshot, it's very difficult to tell if it's just the image if they did all the work. You can't see the structure of their document. You can't see their layers. You can't see how they set up the interface and what tools they were using. So it's not as effective. The best way to do it is just have them take a full screen screenshot and then save that. They can either make a PowerPoint at the end for that. It's a really kind of fun way to grade things. And mom and dad just love seeing that project come alive. Um, or uh, what I've always done in my classes, I've had student blogs. And so the students would just post their progress and every day show me a screenshot. Uh, and then, you know, at the end of the week, I kind of come around and just like in the workplace, I always tried to make my classroom as much like the workplace as possible. So I come around and we just have a chat about where things, you know, where the project was just like a manager would, or if you're a teacher, the way maybe an AP or department head might do, right? It's not this real formal process. They just kind of come around and go, oh yeah, hey, you know, is there anything I can do for you? Is there any help that you need? Is, you know, is everything good? That's how the real world is. So let's start prepping kids for that because this is an industry exam, a real world exam. So uh, screenshots are great and uh, the portfolios were wonderful. Oh, another really great thing about student blogs, student online portfolios is that uh, mom and dad can see the work. And that was great for me in my class when I'd get a call from a parent that said, well, I'm you know, really curious why little Joey's grade is, is not so good. Um, and then I'd send them a link to their child's blog. And then I'd send a link from another child's blog who's a little bit more on task and doing things the way it should be. The difference is obvious. There's very difficult to you know look at two blogs when one is full of content and images and explaining what's going on and then the other one is you know one screenshot of a project that's only a quarter of the way done. It's real easy to put those next to each other and you can go, okay, this is an A. You can see that this is not like up to the A level. Um, and it just really made things easy. So a lot of great strategies on all of this stuff this is kind of one of the things I love talking about most. Um, I don't want to spend too much time in this video doing that, but in the Adobe Ed Exchange, there's some conversations about, you know, how to assess these types of projects. And it just can be a lot of fun, a lot of peer to peer grading I did in class as well. So um, it's really up to you ultimately. But as far as using the product, it should be treated just like any textbook. So if the student had a textbook, they were supposed to read a chapter and then be able to create this stuff in Photoshop or, you know, whatever program. 
how would you grade that? Our software and, and really the way you roll out in the classroom is exactly the same way. It's just that this textbook talks. So there's a lot of different ways to handle it. Everybody will do it their own way, but those are a couple suggestions in the way that those of us that uh, you know contribute here to the content ACA test prep, that's generally how we like to roll things out in our classes.